What do you know about this bag? Then I must go. I know some people would think that the name was just given to the bag. No, there is a history behind the name. Bring your chair and sit down. Let me take you back to the history. The federal government of Nigeria ordered the mass expulsion of illegal immigrants living in Nigeria in 1983. More than half of the expelled were Ghanaians who migrated to Nigeria in search of a better life in the 1970s when Nigeria was experiencing an oil boom while Ghana was experiencing political and economic difficulties. According to some information I gathered, Ghana was said to be a prosperous country from 1930 based on the country's small population. Ghana was richer than Nigeria at that time because they produce the largest cocoa in the world. So as a result of this, people from different parts of the neighboring countries began to migrate to Ghana for a better life including Nigerians, and everything was going smoothly in Ghana at that time. In 1969, when the Ghanaian government started noticing that Nigerians were taking over the jobs and dominating their country, the government decided to deport all the immigrants, which the majority were Nigerians. It was said that before the deportation in 1969, oil was already discovered in Nigeria in 1958. Nigeria, a young and liberating country, with a population of around 100 million people, discovered oil in 1958. Shell, Mobi, and Ajib were the first companies to open a shop in the country to drill oil for commercial use. Despite the terrible military regime that was going on at that time, oil money was stable and hopes were high that Nigeria could thrive. When oil prices rose around the world in the 1970s, the economy exploded. The golden era had arrived and the country became the richest in Africa, earning the title African Giant. Nigerian oil wells produced 2.3 million barrels per day in 1974. The quality of life improved. The standard of living in Nigeria improved dramatically, and things were going well. Ghana, on the other hand, started experiencing the opposite. A drop in the price of cocoa started causing inflation, and things were very hard in the country. Nothing was working in the country, and there was chronic hardship in Ghana at that time. Ghanaian population was roughly 7 million at that time, but several million people, both Ghanaians and other neighboring countries, decided to travel to Nigeria for a better life. Ghanaians flocked to Nigeria in such large numbers that it appears that every Ghanaian household had a relative working in Nigeria. Ghanaians migrated to Nigeria to the extent that all the 19 states that existed at that time were filled with Ghanaians. Law offices, shoe repair shops, ice cream parlors, restaurants, and brothels were all flooded by migrants from different neighboring countries. Listen, the Nigerian government didn't wake up one day and decided to remove almost 2 million Africans from the country. It was discovered that other circumstances led to the expulsion. When two consumer economies like the United States and Canada went into recession and demand was low, global oil prices began to fall in 1982. The price of a barrel dropped and the food prices and the cost of living in the country started increasing rapidly and things became very difficult in the country. Nigeria began to turn inwards as it began to feel the pinch. In preparation of the 1983 general elections, politicians began to utilize phrases like alliance in their manifestos around 1982. They attributed the economic problems to African migrants, particularly Ghanaians. Ghanaians had taken up all the employment and introduced crime to Nigeria, and if elected, they threatened to expel them. In 1983, Shehu Shagari was the president of Nigeria, and due to the hardship in the country, too many immigrants caused problems, dragging and struggling with the citizens of Nigeria when things were very hard in the country. The late President Shehu Shagari decided to declare the expulsion of an estimated 2 million undocumented migrants living in the country. Half of them were Ghanaians. A law was given that any immigrant found in the country without a document would be arrested and imprisoned. And the government of that time was serious about it. This decision was made so that the government could have a breathing space to manage what they had with their citizens due to the bad economy. 
So out of fear, the illegal immigrants packed their belongings and left the country. So those bags scattered all over the places where the bags most of them use in packing their belongings. Especially many Ghanaians used the bag because it was the largest bag available at that time. That was how the name Ghana Must Go came about. Because of time, I was not able to elucidate everything about the story. So you can do research on your own to know more about this story. Please make sure you are following me. See you in my next video.